goes to the fifth meeting in 2017 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. Agenda item one is decision on taking businesses in private, and it's proposed that the committee take items seven and eight in private. Consideration of item seven provides the opportunity to scrutinise the delegated powers provision in the Railway Policing Scotland Bill. Item eight is the consideration of the committee's correspondence to the Commission on Parliamentary Reform. So does the committee agree to consider items seven and eight? Eight in private. Thank you. Agenda item two is instrument subject to approval uh, and the Scottish Landfill Tax Standard Rate and Lower Rate Order 2017 SSI 2017 number 23. This order is subject to the provisional affirmative procedure. Provisional affirmative procedure is common in UK tax legislation, but relatively uncommon in legislation enacted by the Scottish Parliament. The form of provisional affirmative procedure for the purposes of the Bill is set out in section 41.3 of the Parent Statute, the Landfill Tax Scotland Act 2014. Under this procedure, the order must be laid before the Scottish Parliament and will cease to have effect unless affirmed by a resolution of the Parliament within 20 day, 28 days of being made. This 28-day period does not take account of periods of dissolution or recess for more than four days. It is worth observing that the order was made on the 26th of January and that the Parliament will be in recess beginning from the 11th of February up to and including the 19th of February. However, no points have been raised by our legal advisers on this instrument. So is the committee content with this instrument? Content. Thank you. Agenda item three, which is instrument subject to affirmative procedure. And again, no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the draft Judiciary and Courts Scotland Act 2008, Scottish Land Court Order 2017, or the draft Continuing Care Scotland Amendment Order 2017, or the draft National Health Service Scotland Act 1978, Independent Clinic Amendment Order 2017, or the draft Scottish Fiscal Commission Modification of Functions Regulations 2017. So, is the committee content with these instruments? Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Agenda item four is instrument subject to negative procedure. And again, no points have been raised by our legal advisers on non-domestic rates, rural areas, Scotland regulations 2017. SSI 2017 number 22. So is the committee content with this instrument? Okay. Thank you. Agenda item five is instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. And again, no points have been raised by our legal advisers on health, tobacco, nicotine, etc. and care. Scotland Act 2016 commencement number one order regulations 2017 SSI 2017-12, or the Act of Sedarent Rules of the Court of Session, 1994 Amendment Temporary Exclusion Orders, 2017 SSI, 2017 Number 26. So is the committee content with these instruments? Content. Thank you. And moving now to Agenda Item 6, which is draft instruments documents subject to approval item and we first consider the public services reform corporate insolvency and bankruptcy scotland order 2017 proposed draft order and proposed explanatory document sg 2017 8 and sg 2017 9. this draft order has been initially laid under a super affirmative procedure. This means that the draft order is required to go through a pre-legislative scrutiny period, which involves a formal consultation period of 60 days before the Parliament is asked to agree the legislation. The draft order amends the Insolvency Act 1986, the Bankruptcy Scotland Act 2016 and the Public Services Reform 
Insolvency Scotland Order 2016. The purposes of the draft order are to modernise certain aspects of Scottish corporate insolvency law to bring them into line with the position in England and Wales and also to promote the ongoing operation and rescue of viable businesses that are subject to personal insolvency proceedings and also apply certain aspects of the 2016 order to a, a winding up of a company that is underway at the time that order comes into force, as opposed to those aspects applying only to a new winding up. The explanatory document that was laid with the draft order sets out the background to the draft order, the policy objectives and the effect of the various provisions. Four points were raised with the Scottish Government arising from the draft order, and resulting from this, the Scottish Government have undertaken to update some aspects of the explanatory document. So the question is, does the committee therefore agree not to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament, but to welcome the Scottish Government's agreement to update the proposed explanatory document in the following respects? Firstly, to explain in further detail why the Scottish Ministers consider that Article 6 of the draft order does not prevent any person from continuing to exercise any right or freedom which that person might reasonably expect to continue to exercise in accordance with sections 18.2e and 27.d.1 of the Public Services Reform Scotland Act 2010 and also to explain why Articles 6, 7 and 8 of the draft order reduce a burden within the meaning of Section 17.2c of the 2010 Act, that is, an obstacle to best regulatory practice, in accordance with Section 27.1d.2 of the 2010 Act. So does the committee agree? Agree. Thank you. Does the committee also agree to encourage the Scottish Government to update the explanation provided in relation to Articles 3 and 4 of the draft order in the explanatory document to refer specifically to Paragraph 10 of Schedule 8 of the Insolvency Act 1986. This would assist the readers of the explanatory document to understand more fully the basis on which the powers and duties of liquidation committees are defined in rules made under Section 411 of that Act. So are we agreed again? Agreed. Thank you. Uh, and we now move this meeting into private.